Ave Maria, welcome back to No Apologies. I'm Brother Joseph, and today we're going to begin some apologetics concerning purgatory. So Catholics, of course, profess their faith in purgatory, which is a place where those who die without having reached perfection in this life, or who still owe some debt of reparation for their sins, go in order to be cleansed and then brought into heaven. So it's a place of suffering where the effects of sin are purged and the punishment due to sin is paid. So in order to defend purgatory well, we have to be able to make two distinctions. And the first is between guilt and punishment. Does God forgive the guilt of our sin but still require some kind of reparation or punishment on account of that sin? And we have an answer to that question from Scripture, the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, verse 13 through 14. After King David has just committed his sins of idolatry and murder, the prophet Nathan comes to him. And David says to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord has put away your sin. You shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child that is born to you shall die. So God forgave David's sin, but still required reparation in the form of some kind of suffering. And the second distinction is between mortal and venial sin. St. John teaches us that there are different degrees of sin, a deadly sin and a sin that is not deadly. In his first letter, chapter 5, verse 16 through 17, he writes, If anyone sees his brother committing what is not a mortal sin, he will ask and God will give him life for those whose sin is not mortal. There is sin which is mortal. I do not say that one is to pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin which is not mortal. And St. James distinguishes from beginning sin and mature sin in his letter, chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. He writes, But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So there is a sin which brings death, a deadly sin or a mortal sin. And there is a sin which offends but does not bring death, a venial sin. And with those two distinctions then between guilt and punishment and between mortal and venial sin, we can begin to explain the reasonableness of purgatory. So if I die with no sin or reparation due to sin, then I go straight to heaven. But if I die in the state of unrepented deadly sin or mortal sin, then I merit to go straight to hell. But what about the middle ground? If I die still in God's grace, not having committed a sin that is deadly, but guilty of some venial sin, it's unjust that I would merit hell, but I'm still not properly cleansed or prepared to enter into heaven. As the book of Revelation tells us in 21:27, that nothing unclean shall enter it. So the situation demands then that there be a middle place, a purgatory, where the cleansing or the purging can happen. Now, Father Chacon and Mr. Burnham quote from two non-Catholics who themselves believed in purgatory. The first is Samuel Johnson, who, when asked what he thought of the Roman Catholic's belief in purgatory, he responded, Why, sir, it's a very harmless doctrine. They are of the opinion that the generality of mankind are neither so obstinately wicked as to deserve everlasting punishment, nor so good as to merit being admitted into the society of blessed spirits, and therefore that God graciously is pleased to allow a middle state where they may be purified by certain degrees of suffering. You see, sir, there is nothing unreasonable in this. And the second is from C.S. Lewis, who wrote, Our souls demand purgatory, don't they? Would it not break the heart if God said to us, It's true, my son, that your breath smells and that your rags drip with mud and slime, but we are charitable here, and no one will upbraid you with these things, nor draw away from you. Enter into the joy. Should we not reply with submission, sir, and if there be no objection, I'd rather be cleansed first. It may hurt, you know. 
Even so, sir. So we can see that the doctrine of purgatory is completely in line with reason. Thanks for joining me. Here are no apologies. Ave Maria.